All right, guys. I'm recording this with my Logitech headset right now because it allows me to be a little bit louder uh, outside of using my blue, um, blue, uh, blue, um, you know, ice mic, if you will, the um, the blue snowball ice mic, if you will. Um, and like I said, it allows me to be a little louder, uh, mainly because you know my mom, you know, is home from spring break and. You know, I'm trying to do this before she wakes up and everything, so I don't want to, you know, have to be quiet and everything, you know, like I was before. Because I know some of you listen to that and you're like, well, he sounds okay, but not loud enough. So, yeah, that's why I'm using the, the Logitech mic right now, um, if you will. But, anyway, uh, I, wanted, I want you to look at these pictures here. And these are all from just yesterday. These are all from yesterday. Uh, the big one, of course, on the left, I want you to notice, is uh, WWE President Nick Khan, basically in this position that Vince McMahon used to have when he ran the company all by himself. Well, when he, when he ran the company as the, you know, the be-all, end-all. And this is Nick Khan, as far as I know, according to the picture, um, posing with a fan or posing with somebody that works at GCW, and helps with the blood sport event. Uh, this is him posing there, and this is right here probably the biggest evidence um, to showcase that allows you to know that Vince McMahon is no longer around. Because, you know, honestly, there is no way Vince would allow even Nick Khan to, you know, step foot at a GCW um, event or any indie event that takes place around WrestleMania time. You know, there's no way he would allow that. But yet, here we are. We have Nick Khan posing at a, you know, with a fan, or I'm assuming somebody that works for GCW. Um, that might be Brett. La that might be Lauderdale. If I, I think that might be Brett Lauderdale. I think, uh, but posing with them at this event, you know. And again, like I said, this is something that Vince when he was running things would never allow but yet this shows you how much more relaxed how much more freelanced you know everything is it's you know it's no longer just you know one person calling the shots and going oh you can't do this you can't do that or make this person like this make this person like that no you, you could tell the nature has changed uh, considerably now I have no doubt in my mind my personal opinion I have no doubt in my mind Vince probably called Nick Khan up once word got around of what was going on and maybe even, you know, this picture started circulating and he got, you know, wind of it, he saw it himself. I'm sure there's no doubt Vince probably called Nick Khan up and tried to act all bossy to him and go like, what are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? You're not supposed to do that. No, no, no. You know, I, I, would, not, I would not be surprised if, you know, Vince... Again, just my opinion may have done that, you know, because th let's be honest, Vince is always still going to have the mindset that even though he's no longer part of TKO, he's no longer part of WWE, and he's selling off all his stock and everything uh, to basically, I guess, uh, I guess free himself or at least try to create some leeway uh, during this whole situation. You can't tell me that Vince doesn't still believe he's running things. I mean, it pretty much what it pretty much would make what Ronda Rousey said um, in her, you know, in her in her uh, memoir, if you will, in her memoir, as well as what she said previously, that as long as Bruce Pritchard's around, Vince is always going to still have a hand in things. Like Bruce is pretty much Vince's avatar. So, yeah, and, and so yeah, that that alone would basically make people believe and feel that. You know, Vince is aware of what's going on, and like I said, with this picture circulating and everything of Nick Khan being at this event, you know, maybe to pick up talent or to see how talent's doing, and maybe even scout some talent, and that you can't tell me Vince, in my opinion, just my opinion, I could be wrong, called him up and was like, what the hell are you doing, that's the enemy, da 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 da, you know. So yeah, you can definitely tell just by Nick Khan's picture right there, it's a much more relaxed you know, much more freed um, atmosphere uh, for the talent. More, more so when you look at the picture, you know, right, right there with Natalia hugging Minoru Suzuki. 
you never would have seen Natalya do that. I mean, yeah, the wrestlers are free to do what they want on WrestleMania weekend, but when Vince, when Vince was running things, yeah, they had freedom, but very limited freedom. Like if word got out that Natalya was backstage at this event, which is also blood sport, uh, basically Vince would have called her up or had somebody call her up or had somebody go over there and say, hey, Natalya, you got to leave. He doesn't want you here. You know, that that probably would, that's probably what would have happened. I mean, go back to what CM Punk said about you know encountering Vince for the first time since he came back, the f- the first and last time period uh, since he came back um, at the gym at the new WWE Titan Towers. You know, uh, Vince's trainers went to him and said, "Hey, you can't be on your phone. You can't have headsets on um, while you're, you know, while you're." Tra- I'm sorry about that. My my computer stalled for a second. I don't know what happened there. Oh, it's loading right now. That's what it's doing. It's loading something. I don't know why it does that, but it likes to load. So I do apologize for the freeze up there. That was on my computer. It's uh, loading right now. I don't know what it's loading. It's probably trying to do an update or something. Even though uh, the updates are not scheduled to Tuesday, it's either doing an update or it's trying to do a virus scan, like a virus scan protection update or something. So that's probably what happened. So I do apologize if there was any uh, lag in this recording. Uh, but yeah, you know, you go back to like I said what CM Punk said, and you know pretty much, uh, you know pretty much in his opinion, or not pretty much in his opinion, but pretty much what he said when he encountered Vince for the first and last time, is because Vince's trainers came down, saw him on the phone with of all people Nick Khan, you know on the phone headsets in, you know talking with of all people Nick Khan. And Vince's trainers come down and say, hey, uh, Vince doesn't like anybody being on the phone or having headsets on, you know, wireless or not, while they're working out. So that that kind of tells you right there that even though Vince, you know, even though Vince wasn't like the majority owner anymore, but he was on the board, and Nick Khan was the president, you know, <laughs> probably working several stories up on that building in his office, That kind of tells you that Vince, you know, still had that mentality that, you know, um, he doesn't want certain things to be, you know, done a certain way. He doesn't want certain things to be not in his control. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, when it, you know, when it comes to, like, with Natalia hugging Minoru Suzuki... Nick Khan, you know, was, uh, I would assume, Lauderdale or somebody that works at GCW. Or even Shayna Baszler, as you see in the bottom picture, along with Zoe Stark, um, going to p- participate uh, against Masha Slamovich uh, in, the, in the Bloodsport match. You know, it's like, you know, these are things that Vince would not allow to happen. He wouldn't. He would not allow to happen. You know, he would base, you know, because again, you know, he would. You know, if he got wind of what Natalia is doing, or, you know, or you know, let's say superstars being in attendance at some of these events, there's no doubt Vince, you know, would basically you know get on the phone and tell somebody, hey, get them out of there. I don't want them there. That's the enemy. We don't want nothing to do with them. We're the only game in town, you know, and so on. So you can definitely, like, like I said, you can definitely see. You know, a changing of the guard. You can definitely see a changing of the atmosphere because, you know, like I said, you know, you go back to what CM Punk mentioned in his interview on Monday. Um, you know, Vince still believed he was running things. You know, he still, be- I mean, yeah, he was part of the TKO board. He was above Nick Khan. You know, and he had a little bit more say than Nick Khan. But the point is, you know, the point is, nowadays, I guarantee you, if somebody like CM Punk went to Titan Tower gyms and worked out, and was talking on the phone and having his headsets on, listening to music, you know, no one would say anything. I, I, you know, no one would say anything whatsoever. They'd be like, hey, go ahead and continue doing your thing. Because, you know, Vince not wanting, not wanting this, not wanting that, um... You know, that was a Vince thing. He always wanted to have control. He always believed he had control, even if he wasn't the majority owner anymore. And to me, like I said, I would not be surprised if he got on the phone with Nick Khan and asked him, what the hell are you doing? You're not supposed to do that. That's the enemy. 
and Nick Khan has to remind him, uh, Vince, you're not running things anymore. You're not even supposed to, you're not even part of the companies anymore. What are you, what are you talking about? You know? <laughs> so, so I'm sure Nick Khan may have gotten that call. And I, and that, I know that sounds a little convoluted as I was trying to explain it. This, I'm doing this early, like I said, before my mom gets up, so I do apologize. Um, but anyway, you know, like I said, you know, uh, you know, Nick, uh, it's, it's that, like I said, that's just my opinion. That's, you know, like I said, that's just my opinion. But I'm making that comparison to what CM Punk said because, again, you see Natalia, Natty, hugging Minoru Suzuki. Vince would never allow that to happen. He got wind of Natalia even stepping foot. You know, if Vince was still running things the way he was, he got wind of Natalia doing that and saw a picture, he'd be like, I need to talk to you right now. Or he'd be calling up somebody, as I mentioned, and say, get her out of there. You know, and the same with her in this next picture with, uh, with I'm assuming, the new president of Stardom. You know, this is at the 2300 Arena in South Philly at a Stardom event, Stardom American Dream uh, 2024. Vince would never allow that to happen. He would never allow that to happen, especially knowing that Stardom, part of New Japan, has a partnership with AEW. He never would have allowed that to happen. But yet you could see how the atmosphere is more relaxed, more more freelance, more like, hey, do your thing, you know, you know, do your thing, have fun, enjoy yourself. And that's what people like Natalia were doing. That's what some of the superstars like Braun Strowman, CM Punk, and many others that were supporting Shayna and Zoe and Charlie Dempsey. Yes, Charlie Dempsey, Reg William Regal's son, was also at this event competing, black being Bloodsport. You know, that's what they were doing. They were supporting the super fellow superstars. And again, you know, if again the the comparison being is if Vince was still running things, Vince would never allow that. Word would get out, hey, did you hear so and so is in this event attending this event or so and so is backstage at this event? Vince would have said, "Get him out of there." You know the way he's been, the way he'd been portrayed lately. You know, you know, in recent years, as you say, he would be like, "Get him out of there. I don't want them there." You know that we don't associate with these people. We're only about us. We're the only people around. You know, but you don't see that. You don't. I mean, Nick Khan posing in this picture at, at Bloodsport. Vince would never allow that to happen. Even if Nick Khan said, "Hey, I'm gonna." go, you know, walk around, just enjoy myself, get a Philly cheesesteak, whatever. And, you know, let's say during that time he wants to take in the show, if this picture gets taken and it floats about, or somebody sees him that might be connected to Vince, sees him walking in to this event to attend it, Vince would be on, Vince would be on him. You know, he'd be probably watching the event and enjoying it. Phone goes off, buzzing, picks it up, Vince's number, Vince would say, Nick, go on, get your ass out of there, you don't not supposed to be there or you're fired that's how that's how things were on events obviously but now you can see that the new regime doesn't care about that you know they care more about the happiness of the fans the happiness of the wrestlers letting them do what they want to do I mean this is why Shayna was able to take part in this, this is why you know uh, Charlie Dempsey was able to take part in this you know all because of the fact that Vince is no longer in charge and they know that, knowing, and they know that, and see that because of that, everything's better, everything's more relaxed. They're taking advantage of it, and I don't blame them. I don't. I mean, I put this picture of Natalia with I'm assuming the new president of Stardom next to the Stardom American Dream picture, because again, she would have never been she would have never been allowed to do that under the Vince regime. You know that, you know, because Bruce Pritchard would probably see her sneaking off, off and everything, have somebody follow her. You know, and see she's going to the stardom event. You know, they would contact him. They would contact Vince. He'd contact her, and she'd have to leave before she can even attend it. You know, and, and the same with the blood sport thing. Like, you know, Natalia could, you know, Natalia and Stars that were there to support, you know, Shayna and Zoe, and just see and enjoy the, you know, other matches and interact with talent they couldn't interact with on a daily basis or weekly basis. You know. Vince would have somebody follow them, or Vince via Bruce Pritchard or Kevin Dunn or John Laurinaitis would have somebody follow them and see what they're doing and then contact Vince and Vince would contact all these talents or contact certain people to get those talents out of there because you're not supposed to be there. You're WWE and WWE is the only thing that matters. 
you know <laughs> it's like it's like this here these images are a breath of fresh air for a lot of folks not just for the fans but for the wrestlers for the superstars it is a breath of fresh air and I can't wait to see more of this and you know more ta you know more um, images are coming out I mean there's a video on Dijak's uh, Twitter page, X page, if you will, Dijok of NXT, and he's at this, I'm assuming, um, fashion show or something like this, this revolver, wrestling revolver, wrestling fashion show, and he's there to support Mansoor and Mace, who are a team on the independents right now, probably on the way back to WWE, because they, hasn't, because they haven't signed, you know, with um, anybody yet, so they're probably on the way back, you know, who knows, but he's there to support them. You know, and in the past, even if you were part of NXT, Vince would not allow that to happen. Like, Triple H might give the okay and be like, you know, yeah, go have fun, enjoy yourself, support your fellow wrestlers. Vince hears about this, he calls up and says, get Dijak out of there. That's pro That probably would have happened. And again, you could see the relaxed atmosphere. You could see things have definitely changed. You know, and they've changed for the better. You know, and the proof right here is in the imagery. I mean, if Vince was still running things, even if part of TKO, if he was still running things, none of these images you see on this, in this audio video, if you will, audio, depending on how you listen to it, would be even possible. None of this. So I'm glad we're seeing this kind of stuff pop up now. I'm glad guys like Nick Khan that you see on the left is allowing this kind of stuff to happen. And I'm glad WWE is finally opening up and realizing, hey, we can work with smaller in, smaller independent promotions or mid-sized independent promotions or upper m upper mid uh, promotions independent promotions you know in exchange you know we can you know you know we can help them out because in exchange they'll be helping us out with the possibility of you know landing their talent in the future you know which is another thing about this too these these events the, they're actually, they're not just events that allow talent to have more freedom now, but it's, these events are still looked at as scouting events. I mean, the guy that used to be known as, uh, what, what's his name, Alexander Wolf, his, uh, his name's Axel Thatcher now, Axel, Axel T or something like that, he wrestles in WXW and GWF, German Wrestling Federation, and WX, I think it's uh, World Extreme Wrestling or something like that. Um, he signed to them. He signed up with companies, but his contract's probably a freelance kind of like contract. So I would not be surprised if, you know, you know, uh, Nick sees him, others see him, greet him, say ask how he's doing, and then maybe Nick contacts him and says, hey, have you ever considered coming back? You know, you never know. You know, the same with some other talent that's there. Like, you know, we don't know what the contract status of Mike Bailey and TNA is, you know, and outside of that. You know, we don't know the same about Johnny Bloodsport, Johnny Mundo, John Morrison. You know, we don't know any of that. You know, the same with Marcia Slamovich. I mean, these are talents that you know Triple H and Nick Khan would probably want to have under the WWE roster, you know, uh, via NXT or even main roster. You know that. Everybody knows that. So, to me, this is not just a breath of fresh air to see all this happening, but it's also, in reality, a scouting like atmospheres to see who potentially they can bring in maybe for a one-time appearance you know like an appearance they never thought it would happen you know to maybe a full-time deal or part-time deal you know I could see that occurring I can see that occurring and, I, and I'm, I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be surprised if we start hearing reports down the line via five full and PW insider I'm not gonna be surprised in my opinion that we start hearing reports of people being signed to contracts you know, with WWE or special appearances by people like Suzuki or whoever coming up in the near future. I would not be surprised. I mean, Timothy Thatcher, one of the first fight pit matches was, he was involved in, right? Guess what happens? You know, people see how he, well he did here. Word gets back to Triple H. Triple H talks to Nick Khan. Don't be surprised if Thatcher comes back to WWE. Don't be. Because I won't be. I won't be. And he'd be a perfect fit for the No Catch Republic or the No Republic Catch Club in NXT, and maybe potentially for the main roster. So, you know, so I can see that. I can see that happening. But, yeah, 
all in all, this is just, um, like I said, this is a breath of fresh air to see these things. I mean, you would not see Vince doing what Nick Khan's doing in this picture at all. And even if Vince was still in charge, again, I guarantee you, word would get out what Nick Khan's doing, and Vince would call him immediately and be like, get out of there or else you're fired. <laughs> you know, he would. He would. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of glad to see this. I know others are glad to see this and happy to see this. It's just a breath of fresh air, and it's definitely, definitely proof, in my opinion, that Vince is no longer running things. You can see, you can see it, I can see it. You know, it's just a breath of fresh air, and I couldn't ask for any more, any, any more than that. And you're going to probably see more photos like this pop up uh, tomorrow and Saturday, you know, the day of WrestleMania. Probably more so tomorrow uh, than anything. But let me know what your thoughts are, guys. What are your thoughts about all this? Do you believe it's a breath of fresh air? And do you believe it is for the proof that Vince is no longer running the show behind the scenes? Let me know. Comment. Let me know. Comment in uh, comment in the live chat if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, comment in the comment section. Also, you're going to be able to listen to this if not watch it on other platforms like Audible. Yes, I am Audible. I am on Audible. Um, Spotify. Uh, Spotify for podcasters, um, Amazon, Amazon Music, and you'll now be able to listen to me on iHeartRadio and Pandora. The Stitcher one does not work, so I'm going to have to take that out, but yeah, because Stitcher apparently is gone, but yeah, Pandora, I am on Pandora, so if you listen to Pandora on SiriusXM, you'll be able to find me on there. But yeah, I am on, uh, like I say, I'm on, uh, you know, I'm on iHeartRadio, I'm on Pandora, I am on Amazon Music, I am on Spotify, Spotify Podcasters, and Audible. I'm on those outlets. You'll also see this on Rumble, or Rumble.com um, as well. So, guys, again, let me know what your thoughts are overall on what I had to say here. Do you believe this is definitely a breath of fresh air? And, you know, and that, and that it also shows proof enough that Vince is no longer running things. Because, again, if Vince was... None of this would be, none of these images would be even existing right now. But let me know what your thoughts are. Comment down below, live chat during the premiere. If you're watching on YouTube, and until then, I am out.